Another thing I want to talk to you about is antibiotics, and, and, and uh, you know, we've got two things going on with antibiotics. We've got uh, anti antibiotic-resistant strains of bacteria that are proliferating, and literally thousands of Americans are dying every year in hospitals because the conditions that they have, which we treated successfully just a handful of years ago, we can't eradicate. And nobody wants to be in that chair when a doctor walks in and says, I'm sorry, we just can't do anything for you. But this is a serious, serious problem. And there are a growing number of scientists worldwide who, when asked what is responsible for this proliferation of antibiotic and multi-antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria, they point their finger right to animal agriculture. And they say, this is what it is. It is this wholesale abuse of medicines that should be reserved for humans that are be given to these animals as a matter of course. And you might be thinking, well, that's a lot of sick animals. We produce 12,000 tons of antibiotics in this country for use a year. Every year, 12,000 tons of antibiotics. But 80% of it is for animal agriculture. The rest is human medicine. So why are these, these animals on all these drugs? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is they're raised in such sordid conditions, I mean, unsanitary conditions, that they're prone to illness. And they're also they're, they're so close together, the way that they're housed, that if one becomes ill, it's very likely the next one's going to become ill. And pretty soon you've got a whole herd that's infected. So they figure, well, let's head it off in the past. Let's just keep him on a sub-therapeutic level of antibiotics and we'll prevent this from starting in the first place. So you got that, and then you got this other thing that's really interesting is farmers learn that if you give animals antibiotics, they grow faster. I don't really know why, but they get to market weight faster. So more bang for the buck. You get something to market weight faster, or you get it so you can inseminate it, and it'll start producing milk for you sooner. So we've got that going on. And what we see is these strains of bacteria that are coming out on these animal products. And, you know, if we get exposed to this bacteria that has this kind of drug resistance, the bacteria can share that resistance with bacteria in our body. They can pass that on. And it's the strong ones that proliferate. And then the next time we need one of these crucial medications, it may not be effective with us. This is a serious, serious problem. And the other thing is, is we don't want to be exposed to antibiotics in the first place. Nobody should have antibiotics on their cornflakes. And, you know, the dairy industry will tell you, they'll say, we don't allow antibiotics in the milk. Sure, cattle are treated with antibiotics, but we don't allow it in the milk. We test every tanker. And if there's an antibiotic residue, we dump the milk. And I think they're right. I think they're absolutely speaking the truth there. They, they do. They do test every tanker. But the problem is they test them for four to five of the most common antibiotic drugs used in dairy farming. But the FDA allows them to use 30 different drugs in dairy farming. So I think it was early last year, it could have been the year before, the New York Times published a story where they went to a, a dairy cattle slaughter facility, and they, were, they did a story on the uh, investigators who were there checking the carcasses for antibiotics, and they found these elevated levels of antibiotics, legal antibiotics, but they also found antibiotics that were not permissible for use in dairy cows, much higher than they thought they were going to find. And the inspector said, huh, I wonder if this means that the antibiotics could be getting into the milk. But we know that antibiotics get into the milk. It's kind of an odd thing for them to postulate at that point. But when they suggested that because of these findings that they create stronger enforcement in terms of testing and the regulation of the drugs, you know who kicked back. Dan just said, no way, not going to happen. And then the story just fizzled out and we haven't heard anything since. So another one of these 
major issues to be worried about.